Hi, so good day to everyone. So for today, we will be talking about lesson 4, Layout Garden Plots. So for today's objectives, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to design farm plans and layouts according to crop grown, follow strictly planting system and practices according to the approved cultural practices, interpret irrigation system plan according to established procedures, and differentiate designs of irrigation systems. Before we proceed, let's define these terms. Layout E, the act of locating the position of plant in the orchard. Irrigation, the application of water to the soil by any other means than rainfall. Monocropping, the, the agricultural practice of growing a single crop year after year on the same land. And intercropping, the cultivation of two or more crops simultaneously on the same field. So in order for us to determine our basic knowledge and calculation, so let's take this test first. Okay, so we have here a sample of a plan for our garden and let's make our interpretation using the following guide questions. First, what is your area? So remember, the formula to get the area is length times width. So what will be our length and width? So we have 7 meters for the length and 6 meters for the width. So what will, uh, what will we do? We will just multiply these two and we will get 42 square meters. So that's the answer for the question number 1. Next, how many rows are there in the area? As you can see, each letter defines each row. So how many rows do we have? We have 6 rows in our orchard. Next, how many plants are there in a row? Per row, we have 5 plants. How many plants are there in the area? So we will just multiply each row per plant then we will get 30 plants in the area what is the distance between plants per row we have one meter very good what is the length of the area we have six uh, seven meters rather and what is the width of the area we have six meters if you got all the seven questions correctly, very good. Congratulations. Okay, so let's now proceed to our discussion. So planning is an important part of any work to be done, especially when money is involved. A businessman has to be cautious, so a plan should be present, should be present to prevent this array on what will happen on your crop production farm. So common knowledge in measurement, basic computation and drawing skills are essential in creating a plan for your farm. Let's talk about interpret farm plans and layouts. So as you can see, the Farming for the Future program or the FFTF program is an initiative of the New South Wales government in Australia focusing on whole farm planning. So this is not only applicable on their country but is but it is also applicable to ours. Okay, so we can adapt their practices so that we can improve our uh, farming better. So can you help? Uh, uh, farming for the future can help you to plan the best farm layout. And a whole farm plan considers the farm's physical, financial, and human or personal resources for both now and the future. So we are not just preparing the present time but also for the future. Okay? So, site assessment is an important part for us to perform as to perform some on-site assessment before we lay out a farm. So, a site assessment is an on-site on-site assessment of a farm that is necessary so that we can map so that a map can be drawn of the properties topography, boundaries, soils, water resources and so on. And a farm business plan can be formulated. Next, government plans. Before we establish buildings on our uh, on our garden, we should get some permits from the government. Okay, 
So acquaint yourself with relevant re uh, regional, local, and development control plans and their short and long-term effects on your proposed or existing farm enterprise. This will help reduce unforeseen, unforeseen risk and, enha and enhance your farm business. Government's approval may needed for building greenhouses and constructing dams or erecting hail and wind break netting, land clearing or no burn of crop debris or waste materials on farm, odor or noise is a nuisance likely to be generated from the development. So how crops are arranged in row planting? So row planting as, a, as applied in conventional horizontal farming or gardening is a system of growing crops in linear pattern in at least one direction rather than planting without any distinct arrangement. So remember when we say row planting, it is planted or the plants the crops are planted in linear pattern. So this is an example of a row planting. So this is the conventional way of planting trap uh, planting crops in a row. So we can use this method wherein we will plant two and skip two crops before we plant another two. Or just plant one, skip one with six inch rows or six inch distance between plants. Okay, so row planting, the specific advantages of row planting over broadcasting or scatter planting include the following. Light absorption is maximized and conversely, the excessive shading effect of other plants is minimized, thus favoring more efficient photosynthesis and improved crop yield. Wind passage along the inter rows is enhanced with increases gas exchanges and prevents excessive humidity. Access through the inter rows facilitates cultivation, weeding, and other farm operations including hauling. Movement within the crop area is convenient and allows close inspection of individual plants and the visibility is enhanced. So these are the specific advantages of planting your crops in row pattern. In row planted fruit trees and other perennial crops like coconut, oil palm, oil palm and rubber, the common types of planting or special arrangement are the square, the rectangular, the queen conks. Queen conks refers to the five, five plants. And the triangular or hexagonal. So row planted plants are either in equidistant single rows or in multiple rows. Planting in single rows is, most, com is most commonly applied in monocropping or, or sole cropping. Multiple row planting. Multiple row planting is a system of growing crops in blocks or strips of two or more rows. The adjacent blocks are separated by a space which may remain vacant or planted to other crops. This is an example of multiple row planting. We are not just planting one specific uh, specific crops, but we are planting two or more variety of crops. Multiple row planting like coconut and other perennial crops are often intercropped with, with multiple rows of annual crops like corn and pineapple. Next is the special arrangement in intercropping. Special arrangement is a systematic apportioning of the farm area or any growing surface for crop production. In multiple cropping by intercropping, the intercrop can be planted in any of the following ways. Within the rows of the main crop, between the rows of the main crop, and in the replacement series. This is an example of special arrangement in intercropping. Another practice is in strip intercropping. For example, the simultaneous growing of 6 rows corn and 12 rows soybean in alternating strips. These particular examples result from multiple row planting arrangement. Next, the methods of planting crops in the farm. It can be through direct seeding or the direct sowing. It can be either by, uh, used by 
or performed by broadcasting using hill or d-ball or by drilling method. The hill and drill methods are alternatively options in the planting. A method of planting in which seeds are directly planted on the ground. So remember when we say direct seeding, seeding rather, it can be directly planted on the ground. First is the broadcasting. Broadcasting or most commonly known as sabog tanim or scatter planting commonly applies to small seeds like rice and mung bean that are applicable of germination and sustained growth without soil cover. There is no control of plant-to-plant -plant spacing. The seeds are simply distributed on a well-prepared ground by hand or with mechanical broadcast. It can be through traditional like this one or we can use some mechanical broadcaster. Next, using hill or dibbol. Dibbling is an me old, old method of planting crops practiced by subsistence, subsistence farmers in hilly lands with a dibbler or dipanghaso. So this is a panghaso, a short, a pointed spear-like step held by one hand where he strikes the ground to make holes about 2 inches, 2 inches deep and 1 to 2 steps apart. So as the pointed tip of the dibbler is lifted, someone else immediately drops 3 to 4 seeds of an indigenous, open pollinated corn into the hole. The hole is not refilled with soil. The part, that part is done naturally by the cascading down, downward movement of surface soil and fragments of plant. So this is an example of hill or dibbling. First, you need to insert the dibble in the soil, push it downward, create a hole, then insert your seeds. Next and last one is the drill method. The drill method of planting crops is done either manually or mechanically by releasing seeds continuously as if pouring water from the bottle with a small opening. The seed drill allows farmers to sow seeds in a well-spaced rows at a specific depth at a specific speed rate. Each tube creates a hole of a specific depth, drops in one or more seeds, and covers it over. So this is an example of drilling method. It can be through a traditional method by using a carabao to pull the drill or using a machine. Next is transplanting. A method of planting crops in which potted plants or pre-grown seedlings or clones are directed planted on the ground, other growing surface or any growing structure. So the difference between direct seeding and transplanting is that transplanting, you are going to grow the plants in a seedling while the direct seeding, you will just uh, direct insert it into the ground. Transplanting is also convenient with a few plants that can be transferred with a ball of soil around the roots. Next topic is all about irrigation and drainage in agricultural production. So water is a very important to crops. In the absence of rain, irrigation provides the necessary moisture and carrier a plant pool to obtain maximum growth and development of crops. So the functions of farm irrigation systems. The primary function of irrigation system is to, is to supply crops with irrigation water in the quantities and at the time it is needed. Specific function includes diverting water from the water source, conveying it to individual fields within the farm, distributing it within each field, providing a means for measuring and regulating flows, and other functions of the farm irrigation system could include crop and soil cooling, protecting crops from frost damage, delaying fruit and bud development, and con controlling wind erosion. The two systems of irrigation we have through gravity and pumping. Gravity is a system of irrigation that requires a dam to directly to direct the water from a stream. So this is an example of a dam wherein it controls the flow of water to the field. And the next one is a pumping. It is a system of irrigation that uses a pump 
to draw water from a nearby stream or a groundwater supply. This is an example of pumping. Methods of irrigation First is the surface irrigation. The water is applied on the surface of the soil either in furrows or by flooding. This is the most economical method of irrigation. This is the uh, most commonly used here in the Philippines, the surface irrigation. Sprinkler or overhead irrigation. The water is applied in the form of a spray or artificial rain. This method uses water efficiently and the operation is flexible. Drip irrigation. The water is applied through pipes at calibrated pressures Drainage, excess water in the field is removed. Excess water in the field may damage the crops, cause runoff and leaching of soil nutrients. Methods of drainage. It can be through natural or artificial. In the natural method, it drains excess water from the field without the intervention of man. While the artificial method may take the form of open ditches and tile drains or under drains. This is the best method of removing excess water from the field because water passes down quickly, avoiding the removal of surface flow. Advantages of well-drained land First, it is porous. Porous soil is easy to work on. It does not become muddy. It is not acidic. There is no submergence of small growing plants. The growth of plants is generally better. The activities of microorganisms are disturbed. Well-trained land prevents the removal of topsoil, which is the most fertile part of the soil. Good drainage helps in flood control. So before we end this lesson, I will leave you this quotation from those and Tamata. What you see depends on how you view the world. To most people, this is just dirt. To a farmer, it's potential. I hope you have learned from our discussion for today. So see you on the, our next videos. Goodbye. Thank you.